got that spare 10 gallon tank laying around, then you have no excuse but to start a breeding project. Keep watching as I introduce my top five fun and easy breeding projects for a 10 gallon aquarium. Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nanofish and planted aquariums. And I currently have a 20 gallon main display tank, aka the Shy Guys Jungle Tank, as well as a 10 gallon tank in my kitchen, specifically dedicated to new and interesting breeding projects. And so I bred everything from albino quarry catfish, honey gouramis, cherry shrimp, you name it. And at the end of last year, I got rid of all of my cherry shrimp and I pinged you guys in the comments to let me know what I should breed next. So after compiling all of your recommendations, here are my top five amazing fish that are now on my breeding bucket list. All right, the first thing you guys recommended is a trio of fancy guppies. That's right, live bears, meaning that they bear live young pretty easy. You want like one male, two females. You can do colony breeding, which is basically where you keep the parents with the babies in the tank. However, the parents don't have any parental care at all and will eat babies. So if you want to do that, make sure you have lots of cover. Um, I personally like fluffy, dense masses of plants. So things like java moss, Christmas moss, um, what else is there? Guppy grass, of course, water wisteria, and also use a sponge filter that has really gentle flow and won't suck up the babies. As live bears, they come out really, really big and can pretty much eat anything the parents do. You can even take um, the fish flakes and crush them up into a fine powder. They'll eat that. Anything frozen, live, you name it, they'll take it. Just remember that the females do give birth every 30 days, so you can quickly get run over with tons and tons of guppies. So the main things to remember are keep the water clean, do lots of water changes, and make sure to have a backup plan for all those babies. Endler's live bears are also another great alternative if you're looking for something that doesn't get as big. All right, if live bears are a little too easy for you, let's go for an egg layer, white cloud mountain minnows. They come in lots of varieties from the normal wild type to long fin, 24 karat gold, and they only get to about one and a half inches. Best news is they don't even need a heater. You can keep them at room temperature anywhere from like high 60s to low 70s degrees Fahrenheit. They are an egg scatter, which means pretty much no parental care. They'll scatter their eggs everywhere and the parents can breed pretty much year round with females laying 100 or more eggs per month. If you want to increase the yield, you can use yarn spawning mops where the parents will lay eggs in the mop and then you remove them and raise up the fry in a separate tank away from the parents. Or like the guppies, you can have the parents with the fry. You just need to make sure to have that dense mass of fluffy plants that I mentioned before so the fry have something to hide in. They are much smaller than live bears, so feed them something like prepared fry powder food or um, infused soya, which you can make or get from an established planted tank. And eventually they'll get big enough to use um, live microworms or live baby brine shrimp, which I have a tutorial here on how to raise. Suggestion number three is shrimp, which I've already technically raised red cherry shrimp, but people were mentioning other varieties of neocaridinia, such as the yellow ones, the blue ones. So I'll go ahead and give you guys an overview of that. For the tank setup, same thing as the other ones, you'll want a sponge filter that won't suck up the baby shrimp, um, maybe a little substrate, lots of fluffy plants, and then try to get them in an established tank where there's like algae growing on the side walls and the back for them to graze on. As for food, you can pretty much feed them anything, whether it's regular old fish food or that high grade premium shrimp food. Just make sure that maybe like at least once a week, feed them a high quality protein source because they do need protein to create those eggs as well as make sure they have plenty of minerals, whether it's in their diet as a specialty food or in the water itself by using a supplement like Wonder Shell if you have really soft water like mine. I have a whole series on breeding cherry shrimp if you're interested, which you can see right here, but I'm thinking in the future of maybe breeding crystal shrimp, AKA caridinias, cause they're a whole other level of difficulty. We're talking about RODI units, uh, specialty substrate, that kind of thing. Now, if you're looking for a little challenge, consider German blue rams. Similar to their cousins, the epistogrammas, they show some form of parental care where the parents have these cute little babies following alongside them. Adorable. I know nothing about how to breed them, so I've been researching things like this video over here of master breeder Dean and how he's had success with them. In terms of tank setup, he recommends the, the usual things, the sponge filter, the big clump of plants, 
as well as a heater that's set at 85 degrees. I do like it hot, hot, hot. And then he's got little things like small terracotta pots, um, the drip trays they come with, as well as like large flat river stones that they can lay their eggs on. Ideally, if you can get the parents to raise the young, you can start feeding them with powdered fry food like Sarah Micron, as well as the live baby brine shrimp I mentioned before. However, if the parents keep eating the eggs, you may consider uh, taking the eggs into a separate container, putting a few drops of methylene blue so they won't fungus up, and then when they do hatch, you'll have to feed them smaller foods such as infusoria from an established plant to take. Now the top vote from all my viewers were pygmy corridors, which is so adorable. I love the way they look. I've never kept them before, but I heard they're the easiest to breed out of all the other miniature sized cory catfish. For tank setup, you want the same things, sponge filter, lots of dense plants, and then apparently they can be kept in the low to mid 70s, as well as you want a lid because apparently they can be jumpers. Other than that, they seem really similar to breed like other corridors. Just get about at least six of them so that you have at least one male, one female, feed them lots and lots of good foods like live black worms, frozen blood worms, and then rapashi gel food. I love that stuff. If you want more details on how to raise the eggs and fry for corridors, I've got a whole video over here. Otherwise, go ahead and do some more research on how to specifically raise pygmy corridors. So with all those suggestions, which one did I go with for my next breeding project? None of them! <laughs> so I actually went with balloon mollies, which you may have seen a hint of in my previous videos, because they've got a special place in my heart for being the first live bear ever that I got. And then secondly, they're a lot trickier to breed than I thought. According to my boss, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, you should breed the adults in slightly saltier water and then raise the fry in full fresh water. So it's a little more of a challenge than you think. If I successfully do it, I'll make sure to do a comprehensive tutorial and tell you all about it. In the meanwhile, you can take a look at all my other breeding tutorials in this playlist over here. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.